Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about the Blood Necromancer. This is a very, very strong build in Diablo 4 with huge AoE damage and focuses in on the Blood skills. The Blood Necromancer is capable of easily clearing the entire Fractured Peaks content in Act 1 and far beyond that. This video will go over the mechanics, the skills, the talents, the playstyles, and some of the aspects you're going to want to hunt for down in the Diablo 4 depths. So Blood Surge will draw blood from the enemies to deal damage and then expel a Blood Nova that will cause even more destruction upon enemies. Blood Surge's Nova damage is increased depending on how many enemies are drained. Furthermore, Enhanced Blood Surge will also heal the Necromancer every time blood is drawn from an enemy, making this a more tanky build as well. So let's talk about some of the different skills and let's get straight into the build. So the first ability we're going to take is Hemorrhage. This actually bursts an enemy's blood dealing 25% damage and Hemorrhage has a 20% chance to form a Blood Orb. Which is great in this case because we're also going to take Enhanced Hemorrhage. Which with picking up a Blood Orb, your next Hemorrhage also deals damage to enemies around your target and grants 2 additional essence per enemy hit. So we're going to definitely check that box as well. Next up, we're going to also talk a little bit about Blood Surge. Blood Surge is down here in the bottom left in the core skills, and it's a skill that a lot of us are going to want to take. With Blood Surge, you're going to draw blood from enemies dealing 20% damage and expel a Blood Nova dealing 50% damage. Blood Surge's Nova damage is increased by 10 times per enemy drained up to 50x so just absolutely huge and I want to talk a little bit more about the enhanced blood surge so here you're going to be able to see that blood surge heals you for 2.5 percent of your maximum life when drawing blood from enemies if four or more enemies are drawn from then heal for an additional 2.5 percent of your maximum life this is what's going to make you very very tanky as you're going to constantly and consistently regain health from your enemies, you're going to be a very, very tanky necromancer, which is definitely a good thing. We're going to see that there is two options from here, paranormal blood surge or supernatural blood surge, and we'll come back to that here in just a second. I want to go back up and talk about the initiates hemorrhage, because this is going to be the next ability you're going to want to take. Hemorrhage actually grants 1.6% base life as fortify, and each time it hits an enemy, it has 1.5% chance per enemy hit to fortify you for 100% base life. So make sure to take Initiate's Hemorrhage. And from there, we're actually going to go right back down and take Supernatural Blood Surge. So Supernatural Blood Surge is really strong because each time an enemy is hit by the Blood Surge Nova, you are fortified for 1.1% base life. While you have fortify for over 50% of your maximum life, Blood Surge deals 20% increased damage so this is huge damage increases for us because of that we're going to definitely take the supernatural blood surge from there we're going to take blood mist it's going to be around level seven for you guys maybe level eight level nine depending on uh you know what you've all accomplished but blood mist is going to be the next ability we're going to take and that's going to be down here of course we're following that whole idea of a blood necromancer and not because it just fits the scenario and we want to just be a blood necromancer but because these abilities all work so well together and that's what we really like to see so blood mist is actually going to disperse into a bloody mist becoming immune for three seconds your movement speed is reduced by 20 percent and you periodically deal 1.7 percent damage to enemies and healing 4.5 percent of your maximum life so it's basically a nice escape or defensive skill that a lot of people are going to want to take. Um, I do like Blood Mist. I think it's going to be very, very utilized in a lot of different scenarios and situations. And with that, we're going to take Enhanced Blood Mist, which basically gives us a casting a skill that overpowers, reduces the cooldown of Blood Mist by two seconds. So we're going to have a lot of cooldown reduction on our Blood Mist thanks to Enhanced Blood Mist. So now that we're about level 9, level 10, maybe level 11 even, we're going to go down and take a look, or actually it's going to be up, we're going to take a look at the next one. It's going to be Sever or Severe, or people I've heard call everything, I'm just going to call it Sever. We have Sever here, a Specter of You, and charges forward and attacks with its Scythe for 63% damage, then returns to you and attacks gain for 21% damage very very strong this is going to be a core skill that a lot of you guys are going to want to take and then from there blood surge is going to be a very very important ability to continue to level up so from here we're actually going to do two points into blood surge leveling that up to about level three now that we're up 
probably level 12, 13 in Diablo 4's uh, Necromancer. We're actually going to go back to Sever and uh, rank that one up to level 2 as well. And from there, we're also going to want Enhanced Sever. So on the side, you can see Enhanced Sever is going to actually give us uh, really damage enemies along its path for 25% of its initial damage so it's going to make sure we do aoe damage yet again and that's going to be something we love to see from there we're also going to take the paranormal sever every fourth cast of sev uh, sever makes enemies vulnerable for two seconds if you guys don't know vulnerable is basically going to allow us to do even more damage to these enemies so at level 16 17 we're going to take the ghastly blood mist next and I know we talked about the blood mist already and the upgrade is going to definitely be the enhanced which is what we've already talked about, and then the Ghastly Blood Mist, which is going to leave behind a corpse every 0.95 seconds, which is going to make our next ability that we're getting very, very soon even stronger. Okay, so now we're on to Blood Surge Level 4, and from Blood Surge Level, uh, Blood Surge level 4, we're actually going to go down now to the Gruesome Mending. If you guys haven't seen these abilities, very, very strong to make sure you take advantage of. While below 50% health, or life, you'll receive plus 10% more healing from all sources. Because we're a necromancer, blood necromancer that is, doing tons of healing, this is going to be very, very strong. And from there, we're going to take the Colised blood, and we're going to take that to rank two. It's going to basically give us, while you're healthy, your blood skills deal 12% damage increase. So this is going to be very nice because, like I said, we're always going to be healthy because we're always going to be sucking life. And because we're always sucking life, we're going to do more damage because we're always healthy. So it's just a very, very nice rotation of healing up, doing more damage, healing up, doing more damage. And it's just really, really strong in the early game at the very least. And I think, you know, late game, you guys will actually see how strong this build can become as well. So next up, we're actually going to increase our Blood Surge to level five. Finally, Blood Surge, remember, is one of our main core skills that we're going to be using and that's why we have to make sure we get that to level 5 to take full advantage of that ability. We're also going to come up here to rank 2 of Hemorrhage. This is an ability we are going to want to take, like I said, to that rank 2. This will be about level 23, 24, 25, um, depending, like I said, on your, uh, your Diablo 4 experience. So now that we've got the level 2 of Hemorrhage, we're going to take Blood Mist also to level 2. That's going to be down here, this Blood Mist. Rank that one up. And now we're going to also take the blood to level three. And this is going to be really nice for us because we're going to have even more percent or more increased damage when we're healthy. Now we have the ultimate skills to take a look at. And if we go to the ultimate skills, you may be thinking this is an obvious choice and you'd be right. It's the blood wave. The blood wave is the ultimate ability that we will be taking. It's got a 50 second cooldown. Lucky hit chance is only 30%, but the conjure a tidal wave of blood that deals 90% damage and knocks enemies back. We're also going to increase this one with the Prime Blood Wave. So the Blood Wave will actually slow enemies by 50% for 4 seconds. And then of course, last but not least, we are going to take the Blood Wave leaves behind 3 Blood Orbs as it travels. Very, very strong. And I will say guys, this is a build a lot of people have tested in the beta. And it's looking very, very strong at release yet again. If we take a look here on the right side, we are going to take these two first. So the Cold Mages... First thing we're going to do is each time your cold mages damages an enemy with their primary attack, you gain two essence. That essence regeneration is going to be very, very strong for this build. We're also going to see here with Skeletal Reapers, the second pip is going to give us a chance or a 10% chance to carve the flesh off of enemies forming a corpse. This cannot happen on the same enemy more than once every five seconds, but still very, very strong to have more corpses on the floor, of course. So it's great to see. Um, I do want to come up to the aspect side. So we have a lot of different aspects you're going to want to hunt for in your Diablo 4 experience for this Necromancer Blood build. These are specifics that you are going to want to go for. Aspect of Might, Aspect of Disobedience, Aspect of Inner Calm. We have the Aspect of the Protector, Wind Striker Aspect, Blood Bathed Aspect, Aspect of, of the uh, Grasping Vines. We have Rapid Aspect. We have the Fast Blood aspect, and we have the Edge Masters aspect. You can put these where you want them, or you can even go for different aspects, but these are definitely some that will help this build really shine. So if you guys want to learn more about Diablo 4 and the Necromancer in future videos, 
make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. I will say, guys, the damage rotation is going to be hemorrhage followed by blood surge for AoE damage, blood mist if in danger, or to briefly disappear and get immunity. Use sever to boost single target damage in corpse tendrils to make use of available corpses. Also, lastly, you're going to want to use blood wave for maximum damage. The resource generation rotation is going to be spamming hemorrhage to generate essence and pick up blood orbs to regenerate even more essence. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and make sure, like I said, to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on for more videos.